Good morning, everybody. We're, this is Psychology, and we're going to be talking about Jean Piaget today. Mm -hmm. And then I'm looking at everybody. Say hi to my phone. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> my phone wait for you to greet in us, right? Say hi. Say hi. See, this is a raining day, but you can see my student full of energy, right? <laughs> right? Okay, heaven, look at here. Yeah, your name's heaven, so make us happy, right? Okay, great. And I'll come back. Wow, it's already good to start. Hmm. That's why I'm driving here for two hours to see you guys, right? Okay. Okay, so a lot of you write here, right? Am I right? So we already cover a little bit here, and we talk about this thinking, right? Okay, so what is the two way PRJ say that's how we learn? Start with A and A. What's the first A? Assimilation. Assimilation. What's the second A? Accommodation. Accommodation. Okay, so do you remember I say if you go to Japan and then you want to eat something, but actually you don't really know any Japanese. But at least you can ask one fruit, or we call vegetable, then actually you can ask for it because you know how to say it. Which one? Tomato. Tomato! Why, why you know tomato? Because it come from tomato, right? And that you learn that from assimilation, right? And also, if you go to Japanese house, usually they take off shoes, give you slippers, right? And then if that day you went, you don't see it and you want to ask for it, how do you say it? Sleep up. Very good. So now you know, right? So through assimilation, actually make our learning easier. Make our learning easier. But of course, in our life, the more you move on, the more you need to learn a little bit harder way, right? So if it's something you have no idea and you really have to change your brain and then learn it in their way, it's called a commendation. A commendation. You need to modify everything, right? Okay, is there any good example for this? Any good example? You you use a commendation to learn. To learn something in, in your life. Like if you learn, if you learn, I know a lot of you maybe take Spanish, French, German for your second language, right? The reason you choose because it's easy for you to assimilate. But if you choose to learn Chinese, Japanese, then you may have to totally restructure. Restructure, okay. Does anybody still remember how to act? How do you say, I love you in Chinese? Remember, say Chinese, I love you. How do you say it? Or I mean. And that I use assimilation because I know it's very hard if I ask you to write real, 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 real Chinese words. Right? Let me just show off. I'm not asking you to remember. But let me show off. So you know if I ask you to do this word, you'll be, what are you talking about? The real way, this will be. Or I right. So if I want you to memorize this, then I think you will take a lot of accommodation. Right? But you can, you do. If you keep doing that, then you are able to do, right? Okay. So after that, of course he didn't stop here. 
he will say, oh, we have four stage. We not the first day of life and you start to able to talk, right? So the first stage is called sensory motor. Okay, does anybody remember a little bit about sensory motor? How do we learn? You put your finger in your mouth. That's how you learn, right? So in this stage, okay, first to two, okay, the baby learn through looking, touching, putting things in the mouth, sucking, grasping. That's how they learn. So if they hold your finger and put their mouth, don't say, eh! No, say, huh, oh, what did you learn about my finger? Yeah. What did you learn? Because for, for, for them, everything is new. They have to assimilate, right? Assimilate, and then gradually learn the new thing, right? But that time, okay, one thing is very important uh, ability. They start to learn. It's called object permanence. Anybody remember what it is? Yes. Um, isn't that when, like, the baby doesn't need to see it to know it's there? Yeah. If you hide in a, in a room, you want to play hide and seek. If baby have this ability, object permanent, they are going to keep find, try to find you because they know you are there. You are somewhere. Or if you hide the toys, you play with them and you put your jacket, cover it. Okay, they don't see it. Okay, before they have this ability, they are going to just run away. They are going to, they not pay attention or they cry. But once they have this ability, they make fun for high and sick. You know, they keep saying, ah, 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 ah. That means you are somewhere, please, you are somewhere, right? Or oh, they will go to, go to take out your jacket and try it there. Okay. But actually, they have, they have a, one research show, A, not B. Okay. They say, if, if you hide in front of them in the A spot, and actually later you change your hiding spot to the B. Okay. Unfortunately, they will only go to your A spot. Keep looking for because they still have a trouble to associate actually. Even they see it, but still have a little bit hard time. Okay? But at least this part, okay, is there. And because that happened so that everything else is possible to them, right? Everything possible to them, okay? So for example, right now, we sit here, we know outside is raining, even we don't see it inside, but we know rain is still there. Hopefully they go away, but the weather channel say 100% today, so I think the rain will be all the time today. Okay, so that's first thing. Okay, so you can see the baby, so baby, able to, you know, to find that end. So, what's this ability called? Object, Object permanence. Okay, that's very important for the first stage. Okay, now the second, so the first stage is called sensory motor. Okay, the second stage called pre-operational. Operation, the word in PRG is mean thinking. Okay, so this age is that kind of before thinking, okay, before thinking. And he divide this age, this stage to, you know, so birth to two, and it'll be two to seven, and seven to 12, and 12 and further. This is something people criticizing him, say you make the range is too broad. Well, but at least he make, he start, he, he initiates some theory, and then people later can learn more, and then, you know, to do further, further development for the theory, but at least it's a good start. Okay, now this stage, then what ability they are developing, when I say P, I-N-G, that means they are from don't really know to they know. Okay, so if you look at this boy, if you can tell the story, tell me the story about what this boy said. So if you are, Assist if you if this is your brother, your younger brother, and then you pull out the same amount of juice 
to two cups. One is short, one is thin and tall. And of course, kids always want more. Kids always want more. Okay, so if you ask him, which juice do you like to have? If she, he really like orange juice and he want more, he will say this. Because in his mind, hey, I got more juice. Okay, and then this same thing for this girl, even you put the Play-Doh in this shape, and then the same two same shape you push down become flat. For her, this is totally different amount. Okay, and if kids like this because they still lacking of conservation ability, they still lacking of conservation ability. So conservation is mean even even you see. They have same amount in the beginning, but because they change the shape, so they now, if you have a conservation, you know, even they look different, but they are the same. If you are lacking of, that mean you think they are different. Okay, and actually the research fund, you know, you compare three, four, five years old, the kid, three years old, definitely still like this, but when they start to get to four and five, they start to know the difference, okay. Before they have this ability, if you if you happen to have a twin, who think you the future you're going to have twin kids? You do, you do? Really? Ooh, boy or girl? Boy or girl? Huh? Okay. Okay, how about your dad? You know, I have twin girls. Okay. And we already have twin here, right? Okay, so if you have twin and they always want the same. You only want to have the same, they only always on the same. And you only have three cookies. You only have three cookies, okay? And so, happen you give the first one two cookies. And the second one come in the room late. And then you give her one cookie. And then she cries, no, I want the same amount with her. You know, it's unfair, okay? Before they have this ability, it's easy. You just divide your one cookie into two, two piece. Here you go, that's your two cookies. And she'll be, yay, so happy, I got a two cookie, just like my sister, right? Well, if you only can do in the certain amount of time, the, the age, okay? Once they get older, you cannot fool them. You cannot fool them, okay? So that's called, what, what the ability called? Conservation, okay? So conservation is a very important ability they start to develop during the pre-operational stage, okay? Do you always want the same as with your sister? Right, and otherwise you'll cry, right? Yeah. Right, <laughs> okay. Teach them more, these two still are going to have a twin in the future. <laughs> Make sure you guys report to me, okay? Once you got a twin, okay? <laughs> Email me and say, that's my twin, okay? Now, in this stage, they also have a ability, start to know people have a thinking. They call the theory of mind. Theory of mind. They start to, they start to say, I think, okay? They start to understand people actually need to think, need sometimes, Things not go right away or as you expect because people have to think. Okay, that's called theory of mind. Okay, now, they also have some belief. This is called false, the false belief test. That means they only can see whatever they see. Okay, they don't see other people's point of view. They don't see other people's point of view. Okay, so for example, if I have a, if I have this paper towel and this uh, spray in front of me, and I do like this, okay, and then pretend, Cindy, pretend you are very little little kid, okay, and I'm going to ask you, what do you think what I see? Uh, the paper towel. Right. If I was a kid, I would say that. You don't see this. Uh -uh. Even from my point of view, I see this. Uh -huh. And you see this. 
But when I asked I when I asked Cindy what do you think what I see, she will tell me I can see paper towel. Okay? And we call this egocentrism. Okay, so then quite often we may feel kids in this age is very selfish. Because everything is about me, 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 me. Well, it's not they are selfish. This is their limitation. They are unable to understand situation from other people's point of view. Okay? And that is a nature. That's a nature for that stage. Okay? So this is a pre-operational stage. What's first stage called? What's first stage the name? First stage. Sensory motor. And the ability developed in that stage called object permanence. The second stage called pre-operation. The ability developed in that stage, first one called conservation. conservation, and then they can, they think people, they understand people are thinking called theory of mind, and then they are so selfish, we call it a egocentrism. Okay, great. Okay, now, so let's be here, okay. Now, the third stage, ooh, 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 I jumped. The third stage is called concrete. Okay, and this stage is pretty much in your elementary school. Okay, and think about in your elementary school, how teacher teach. When teacher teach, they have to give you very concrete object to show you what's the, what's the shape look like. They need to give you the shape, right? And then if they need to tell you the angle, like 90 degree, they need to like bring the, bring the, the, the ruler and then show 90 degree, right? And so it's very important that stage you have to learn in concrete way. Okay, now th think about how do you how do you do math? Everybody remember how your teacher teach you math in elementary school? Rather, how do you learn math in elementary school? Mm, I forgot. You forgot. Hannah, what do you think your teacher, how do your teacher teach you? I think in a simple way. Huh? Like in a simple way? Like what? For me to understand. Like beans or something? I mean beans. Count them. Right. Like, only go to like 10. Bring me it down in the section. Right. And then, thanks God. Give us a finger. Have 10. So we can, okay, 2 plus 5 is 7. You don't believe it? Count that. Right? And so that's, but after you know addition, then you also need to know subtraction, right? So if two plus five equals seven, then what? Seven minus five equals two, right? So do you remember, you can recall you use your finger a lot during that time because your finger actually help you to learn how to do math, right? How about multiplication? How do you know multiplication? How do you know two times two equal four? How do you know three times three equal nine? You're supposed to multiply them and count them out. Huh? At that age, you count it out. You count it out? Like you okay, so addition to find out multiplication at that age. Okay. And what, what you usually use to count? Objects. Huh? Like little objects. Oh, a little object, right? So how, how, how long take you to remember that the timetable? How long take you to remember the timetable? And I know the teacher will be like some student already passed, maybe two times times two, and then tomorrow you pass three and pass four. Do you know how do you how do you multiply nine? I think they have a, a way, right? Okay, you want to show us? I think you know, right? So nine times one, you have nine. Nine times two, you have 18, 
Nine times three, yeah, twenty-seven. Right? Nine times four, yeah, thirty-six. Nine times five, yeah, forty-five. Right? Has anybody done this way? I never, I didn't learn this way. I just the other day I watched video, uh, the TV show. They they say this. It's interesting. The people some sometimes they come out some way so easy for kids to to practice, right? But no matter what way you teach, your goal is for kids able to master those math skill, right? So right now you pretty much know it. Okay, so now let me ask you a question as an educator. How soon you want to introduce calculator? Because calculator won't use any of this skill. Calculator only let them use finger. And the calculator give them the answer. So as an educator or as a mother, how soon you want to introduce a kid? There is such thing called calculator. Catherine, how soon you want to introduce your kids a calculator? Um, I would make sure I teach them like the simpler ways to do math before I introduce them to a calculator because I want them to be able to do it without the help. Yeah. So how 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 much do they do math? Do they need to memorize the timetable? Yeah. They have to. They have to know how to calculate in by hand. So it's about what age? Probably they, like, I would say like 12. 12. Any other? Maya, how about you? 12. About 12? Yeah. Okay, Michaela, how, how old are you are going to give your kid? Calculator. Okay, so how do you hide from them? <laughs> Before 12 years old. Remember now that all the phone have calculator. I feel like it's in today's day and age you're they're already introduced in a kindergarten. Like I know back at home it's crazy. Like when you walk into a kindergarten class, every single one of those kids is sitting there learning on an iPad. So they're already using the technology that's there and they will always live with that technology. So yeah. like, so what are you hiding it from them? Why not develop a way to teach them like with the calculator? Use calculate as a reinforcer, maybe. Right? You have them calculate and then use calculate as a reinforcer. Say, okay, now you know how to do it. Now let's push put this magical button. See, did you get the same answer? And then maybe I I, I think that's a good idea, yeah. right? Rather than hide from them, you, you use it in the right way. Well, right? then you think about it, you know, like we all complain, it's like, well, why do I even need to learn this? Like, I can just Google it. And it's like, okay, so what, what's the point of teaching them? Like, they're never going to live without internet. Yeah. Or without a phone yeah. or without, like, anything like that. And I always say, like, you're never going to walk around with a calculator in your pocket, like, back in the day. Yeah. I don't get us. That's true. Okay, so now, reverse question. How old do you think people can still learn technology? Like, do you have a grand grand parents? You think they don't need to learn, or they don't want to learn those high tech like you guys? How old do you think that you should still continue to teach them? What is the limitation age for not learning? There is no limitation. There is no limitation because if you don't teach them, how do you know they don't know, right? So actually, thanks technology, but as we know. We need to use the in the right way, right? I use for recording the class. This is a very good way to to help me and help the student. Okay, now, so that's one ability, reverse ability. Okay, then also transit reasoning, also ability that then in this stage. Okay, if A equal B, B equal C, then logically they start to able to know. Okay, then A equal C. Okay. And also other things, so we know in this stage for sure they have a conservation. Okay, still remember what's conservation? Still remember? What's this? Still remember? We just say in the previous stage. Yes. Um, it's about the, the amount of different things. Yeah, even they look different, but they, if they come from the same amount, they still the same. Okay, cause and effect. 
right? They know if you do this, that's the reason, okay? And then they are able to do mental operation, so they're able to not only do math, they can start to think logically, okay? And they can do divide into group, and they can put, you know, like one, two, three, four in the order. So that is the uh, concrete stage, okay? The last stage is your stage. It's a formal operation, okay? Formal operation is mean now you can think the thing in abstract. Okay, you don't need, the, like when I teach, I'm teaching you here, I don't have to really have to bring the concrete stuff. I can just say, and you have a, you know what I've been talking about. And then you can start to make your application and conclusion in, in that way, okay? So, and you can start looking for the solution and then do yourself. So then, this actually is a, a four stage from PRJ, okay? So now, this is the four stage, four stage. Okay, sensory motor, pre-operation, concrete, and formal operation. Okay, now, in our culture, okay, and we know we already talked about this, right, right? We start from the same beginning, <clears throat> but different culture maybe promote different subject. Okay, some culture may be very emphasize, strong emphasize math. Some culture maybe more emphasize on the literature, right? And so that are depend on culture and actually depend on the parents. Sometimes kids know more if the kid, if their parents in certain field, right? If kid parents in scientific field, the kids know more about science. If kid, what, what's your parents feel? What's their expertise? Engineer. Engineer. Homeland security. Homeland security. And then any other? Um, education and accounting. Okay, education accounting. They are two very different, right? Any other? What's your parents' education background? Um, my dad is an artist, and then my mom is a communication student. Okay, how about heaven? My dad is an entrepreneur. Huh? My dad is an entrepreneur. Okay, how about you? My mom is a medical assistant. Yeah, okay, how about Hannah? management Okay, and how about me? Yeah. Uh, my dad is a foster dad, and my mom uh, does placement at Women Technology. Okay, how about you? So, my mom is in business. Huh? She's in business. Ooh, how about you? Um, I'm in the management. Okay, how about you, Jaden? <laughs> my mom, uh, she's a social worker therapist, and my dad's Okay, so if anybody, your major right now is something to do with your parents, totally different? Okay, raise your hand if you, are, you feel the same as your parents. It's about science. Okay, and then totally different. Wow, wow, wow. How about you, you in the future? I know you're still in high school. Um, yeah, it's not the same. Okay. So why? You intentionally turn to the different direction? Or intentionally? Uh, I don't, my mom's there. Huh? She's an accountant. I just... You don't want that. Okay. Yeah. Right? Very interesting, right? But even so, I think you may somehow a little bit know more about their stuff maybe, or if they not, don't want to teach you. But anyway, it, different culture, they teach people different things, right? So we grow in different environment. Okay, now, when Gosky talk about actually your culture and your family, actually they are influenced your cognitive development, your cognitive development. So children do a mental representation of the, the, the world. So actually, adult, it's very important as a guide, guide as a guide, guidance. Okay, how they teach you, how they teach you your life. Okay, step by step, step by step, but step by step. You know, even intention or intention, they teach you, right? They teach you, they guide you to the direction. Just for this picture, it's very easy, simple picture. But then, how the father teach kids how to cut a tomato. By the way, tomato is a vegetable or, or 
fruit. Fruit. The fruit. You think they are fruit or vegetable? They are fruit. Mm -hmm. You think they are fruit? Mm -hmm. How many you think they are fruit? How many you think they are vegetable? Right? When you walk into our uh, cafeteria, they have a tomato car in slide and they have small. I heard, I'm not sure that's 100% correct. I heard small tomato is fruit, big tomato is vegetable. Okay, but anyway, when you eat tomato, did you bite it now? or you are cutting them? Depending on the size. Depending on the size. Okay, okay. And so, I remember when we were young, we eat tomato as a whole, but we put the plum inside the tomato so they don't taste a little bit salty. That's how we eat. I don't think people eat here. Okay, but anyway, when gas get the reactor, we didn't really say too detail here. The only point you just need to know, and I know, is that you doing Vengaski? Who did Vengaski? Or another Cindy? Anyway, the one of our students do Vengaski. Uh, he was from uh, Russia, but he well, he died actually in age 30 something, very, very young. Okay? But his theory is actually make parents knowing how important your role as educator at home. So that's why I encourage everybody learn as much as you can. Because in the when you start become parents, your kids come to you for everything. They don't care about what your major, whatever they have problems, especially the homework problem. Mom, daddy, <laughs> and you cannot say, I forget about this. When I have that problem, good thing we have a YouTube right now, right? So I, I didn't understand. So let's look at for YouTube. And then uh, let's learn together, you know, but if you have a good foundation, that's easy for you to assimilate to the material teacher, the, the government. Okay, so now let's learn about moral. I did a lot of you talk about Colbert. Who is Colbert? Who, 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 who introduced Colbert for your homework? PPD. Colbert. Cobra, the one commit suicide, remember? Right? Right? So are you you are the one in Cobra? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about Cobra? Um, he basically created the theory of moral development. Yeah. Um, you know, deciding what was, I believe it was, like, the way that children mature, like, the cognitive, the cognitive nature of, like, the three levels of moral reasoning that they go through. Yeah. His death was really sad, though. He, like, parked his car on the side of a road. Yeah. And, like, walked out onto, like, a frozen lake and then fell in, and then found it, they found his body, like, two weeks later. Yeah. He get depressed, right? Yeah. Um, he actually learned from Piaget. So he said, huh, Piaget talk about this, how we throw, develop it cognitively. Then how about moral? Right, how about moral? How many of you, when you walk from library to St. Mary and the traffic light, it's red light, but you cross over. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't give a damn. Right? Right? And why? Don't you know it's red light? You're supposed to stop? There's a word that there's no car. There are no car. And my class is almost the time, right? Okay, so let's look at, yeah, as Jordan said, they have three stage development, okay? The first stage is called pre-convention, okay? Pre-convention stage, okay? Pre-convention for very young, young, young kids, okay? In that time, they don't really know what's mean moral. They don't have that idea yet. By the way, when Cooper developed this theory, actually he, his theory, his way of doing research is very simple. He talked about a story. The story is said, okay, it's a, a poor couple. Okay, the wife is very sick. Now they know the medicine can cure wife is in doctor's house. 
in doctor's house. Okay, so are you going to steal the medicine from doctor's house to help your wife? Or you are going to keep moral and let your wife die? Okay, so what, 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 if you, if, if, Cob if Cobra came to you, what, what's your answer? Steal it. Steal it? Because you believe that life is important. Mm -hmm. How many are you going to steal? Okay, how many are you going to keep moral? Okay, okay. So this is how he, how he studied, okay? And so he found actually, for the very, very young kids, they don't really know what to mean mono. The word is too heavy for them, okay? So the kids in that stage, they follow rule because first, first of all, this is even younger, younger, this is pretty much the first level of this stage is a fear of the punishment, okay? You go to sleep, you, you go to sleep, in your, your tongue, the parents say, go to your room. So you go to your room, not because you like it, because you are afraid of being punished. How, how early you confused when you were young? How, how, how early did you have to go, to go to your room? When you were very, very young? 8.30. 8.30? Probably around, around there, yeah. 8.30? Anybody you confused around 8.30? More depending on when my dad got home. My mom let us stay up until my dad got home because he was the one that did like bedtime and stuff. And if she didn't, she would never see him. Okay. He would only leave for work so early and he had to come home so she didn't wake up. Right, right, right. Anybody you're confused even earlier, like seven, eight, nine? For me, it's dependent on, I guess, the time period. Because, like, when my parents were together, it was like 8 30 or so, but yeah. then they divorced and got separate houses, that whole system was just messed up because we lived in separate houses and my mom goes to work at 2 a.m. So I had to get up at 2 a.m. to go to my dad's house and then we basically just stayed up from then on. So you, did you get back to sleep at 2? No. No? Nope. He's already wake up. Have fun. Yeah. I, <laughs> I would sleep from like, from like 10 to 2 every day. Really? And then I would just be up for the rest of the day. But who, who be with you when you Wake up, your father needs to sleep. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, well, when we usually got there and he saw that we were like in the house and stuff, he would like get up and make sure that we were okay and like yeah. play with us and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so depending on the situation, sometimes it's very hard to enforce. But kids follow parents' rule in this time because they are afraid of being punished. Okay. And then gradually they start to obey because they believe that's their best interest. In. So they think, okay, I'm going to follow because then they will say I'm the nice girl. They are going to say I'm a good boy. So if I follow, I get praise. Okay, that, that they enjoy it. Okay, now, when they're about age 10, then they start to follow, follow, follow for the rule, school rule, traffic rule, you know, all the rule they follow, their moral judgment based on conformity and loyalty to others. So you know what conformity means, right? You follow the rule. You follow the, the, you follow the group, okay? And that's called conformity. Then later, they should to understand, oh, okay, now that's the traffic rule, that's a school rule, right? right? In school, uh, how much different between high school and college in terms of rule? Huh? Yeah, more freedom. And I, it is still true, some school building before high, before college, in high school, the middle school, you're not allowed to get to the school building before the school bell ring, not before eight o'clock or something, right? Right? But then in college, you just walk in, you can even sit in the dark here, right? Right? And so more freedom now. That's why maybe they cannot use that. So now, if you cross street from library to Samaria because the because even the the traffic light because you don't see the traffic. Okay. We consider this is a post conventional. 
post-conventional. That means you become more flexible. You follow the rule in a flexible way because you, you start to have critical thinking. You start to be able to say, hmm, I wonder. And you know what? According to Colbert, only people they have been through college education, they will be able to develop, develop to this stage. Only if people have that higher education experience, okay? And because what? Because in college right now, the teachers start to say, you have to think. The teachers say, everything I say, you don't have to believe, <laughs> right? And so actually, I find it's very difficult for me to do critical thinking, especially I come from the culture in that time. Now it's better, but in my time, we don't emphasize too much critical thinking. So when I come to America, I need to do critical thinking. I have a hard time. I don't know how to think. Right? And so critical thinking is takes time. Okay, let me ask you a question. You are you went to a you go to a party and actually you I believe a lot of you are a, under age twenty one. Right? And your friend said, Hey, you want to stream? And you know you're not supposed to. So what do you do? That is a time required post-conventional thinking. How do you make decision? How do you decide? How do you react in that in that in, in that situation? What did you do? Jordan? What did you do? Do you use your age as a good as reason? Or you just pretend not to tell them anything about your age? Oh, I just pretend. Huh? Pretend. <laughs> pretend and you just get along. Yeah. Okay. Anybody? Anybody find that your age is very good? Good. How to say? Good, good, good excuse. So you don't have to be involved. What did you do? Mm, well, right now it's mainly because of my sports here. So you, because your sports, period, you're not allowed. Yeah. So that'd be a very good way for, to keep you away. Yeah. Right. How about you? Uh, sorry, sports. If you are used sport. Oh, okay. And me as your high school, so yeah. you may not have that temptation yet. Yeah. How about Michaela? Um, I'm used to high school too, but... Okay, you know. How about you, Jedi? Um. Okay, you don't know, or you use sport. All right. Okay, how about Jordan? <laughs> because you are old now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he is the one older than 21. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's interesting, in my country, we don't have age limitation. Where are you from? Taiwan. I'm over there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's going to Canada. Yeah. Yeah, Canada too. But. <laughs> I'm about to have a Yeah. But because I think it's interesting because you don't have age limitation, so nobody even think about it. So nobody say, oh, I'm going to get 21 and do it what? You know, because it just naturally, it's already there around your, one time I went to one, 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 uh, one city for a tour, and they have a, they bring us to the wine company. You know, and you, you, you are allowed to get sample. I see a lot of little kids is doing that, you know. So it's interesting, but anyway, because you are from different culture, there are different rule. Like here, you drive at six, age 16, right? In my country, people don't drive in the age. You know, so people, for some reason, people put age for different definition, right? How many think you are adult? How many you think you are adult? Huh? <laughs> okay. Legally yet, mentally not. Okay, let's talk about mentally because we are in psychology class. How many of you believe mentally you are adult? Okay. How many believe mentally you are you are teenagers? Okay, if you are choice, how many of you want to stay in teenagers? Okay, okay, okay. How many of you want to stay young forever? 
You can mentally, mentally, right? Mentally, yes. Okay, great. Okay, so we know the children actually, uh, how do they associate with wrong and right? Okay, it's really depend on, first of all, emergence, emergence of conscious, conscious, okay, conscious, because uh, sometimes we don't have that clear conscious mind yet. Okay, so depend on the maturity of that, and also the the moral emotion, moral emotion. Sometimes adults like to install those uh, negative emotion to the kids, to say shame and guilty. Then the kids more likely not able to think morally because it's everything for them is shame, 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 shame. Right? If the if the parent can show empathy. Show them, I understand your feeling, and I know it must be hard. Let's do this way. Then maybe they can develop a, a better way. Okay, now, okay, so now, because we have such thing called rule, so if kids, if people against the rule, then you will do, you need to do something, right? So, what people do? What is boy? What happened for this boy? Do you know what he what he's do? He huh? He yeah. How many of you pictures say are going to send your kids to the corner? Say they stand there. Okay. Okay. In what way? Why? What trouble you will send your kids to sit in the corner, Evan? What? what what's the order if pretend is your kid? What are you going to say before you send to here? What do you say? Okay. Your yeah, trouble, go to the corner. For Jordan, if this is your kid, how long he would he have to stand? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Vanessa, how long your kids have to stand there? I say it depends on the punishment, like what they did. Okay. Okay, so what they did, give an example of what they did. I like to think like for instance in the house and they break something that's like valuable or even glass, I'd say put them in there for like okay. at least five minutes because kids still have much like, really good process of time. Okay. So it feels like forever. So if that it breaks something then five minutes. Okay. So this is called they have a two kind of punishment. One called power assertion, one called deduction. Okay. Power assertion is more like a more harsh punishment, okay? Maybe even involved to the physical, okay? And induction is more like talking, talking. Okay, so how do we make this time out meaningful, educational? You have to explain your reason of like why you did it. Like what did they do wrong? Yeah. And how can they fix it? Okay. And like why were you upset about it? Okay, that's after five minutes or before that five minutes? Before, before. you send to there or after they stand up there? Before. Before? Before? After. I do it after. After? Um, so to make sure that I knew what I did wrong, my okay. parents would like make me write like a sorry note and like make me apologize and then write like what I did wrong. So I would, I would know not to do it again. Okay, after? Yeah. After? Okay, so quite, quite many of you say after, okay? What are you going to do before, after? Huh? Probably after. Probably after? Okay, why after? Why after? <laughs> I think it's beneficial to do it before because then while they're standing there, they understand like it's a consequence of their action. Whereas if you just stand and like put them in the corner, they're thinking about 80,000 other different things versus like if you give them your reasoning, they're standing there thinking about what uh -huh. they did. Uh -huh. Versus if you just put them in the corner, they're going to be like, okay, what do I get to play with my toys? Then you talk to them after. It's already like kids' brains don't like have the attention span to like think about it that long. So if you make them wait 10 minutes, they probably don't even remember what they already did. 
They just know you punish them. Yeah, there's like head and complain for 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. But of course, one situation, if they are so emotional, they're not able to come down to lesson yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is a good way to calm them down first. But some kids don't come down. They even cry even louder. They even louder than you may, than in the case you may really have to talk. Right? And so when you talk, but sometimes if after you talk, maybe they already apologize. Do you think that you should, you should still send them to the corner or they already understand? I still would, but that's only to inject the fact that there has to be consequences and repercussions. Okay. So that they say, okay, I know now you understand, but you still need to like, you know, have time out. Not, even, not necessarily in the corner, maybe stay in your room or what for or some consequence, right? So it looks like a lot of you doing induction. Induction, right? And then power searching, it's, it's actually it's not a good way. It's an easy way. It's very easy, very quick. You just do, right? But what happened? Remember we talked about the trouble for punishment, right? They don't know why, and they only temporarily effect, right? And so as I mentioned, the same hand, you can do the power association or you can do induction. You can touch them or you can punish them, right? And so very important, you know, we need to know why we want to do punishment, okay? And of course, because they are part of moral development, it's important for them to know uh, the consequence, right? I think oh. the contrary to that too, like lots of parents put their kids in the corner for themselves to calm down. Oh, that's a very, very, very good point. Like, I less of the time it's about that, it's about the fact that you don't want to, like, scream at your kid and you need to, like, calm yourself down before you, like, can have a reasonable conversation with them. That's, that, thank you for, for bringing that up. As a parent, I know, sometimes once you get angry, your whole emotion is going up and every punishment you do in that time won't be reasonable. You know, so it's important for parents to calm down. So maybe you can even tell your kids, okay, you stay there, I stay here, let's all calm down, and then we will talk about it. And so the kids start to understand, oh, my parents also need, need to have this time to process. That's a very good point. Okay, any other feedback about the punishment? Wow, I think you'll be lucky to be your kids, right? I think a lot of kids, over there, listen. Oh, who will be my good parents? <laughs> right? And the twin will come to you guys. <laughs> oh, they are twins. Okay, so now, how about if you give them punishment right away, it's better or late? Okay, so here, talk about delay gratification now for a larger reward later, because a lot of times the kids, they want something. They want right away. But actually, you want to teach them self control. And same thing, teach parents. Parents also need to learn self control. Okay, so how do parents teach you self control? So, for example, right now, today, right, when you wake up, you really want to go back to sleep, right? Feel good, right? But then you learn to delay gratification. You say, okay, I'll come to a class. And when I finish class, I go back to sleep. That's delayed gratification. How about you see the cookies? How many of you believe you have very good cell control? You're pretty good. Wow, wow. Wow, that's great. See, I don't know if they still have that. I know in our cafeteria before the pandemic, when I went there to eat, before you walk out, there's so many cookies there, so many dessert there. And very easy for people just grab them and the, all the dessert, 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 and you know that's not good for the body, but sometimes just hard to stop, right? So how do you then self control? Um, for me, self control was more of like, it came off of like an incentive system. Like me growing up, I was always raised to 
I was, I was always taught that like if I had good grades and I always behaved. Uh, for me, it wasn't really so much about sweets because my parents, they like candy too, so they're most likely to give it to us. But <laughs> our incentive system was like, hey, if you got good grades and you behaved all the time, we'll go out to eat at like Applebee's or something like that. So my self control came from like having that system where like, okay, let's behave, let's do this, let's do things right, and that kind of transformed into a system where it's like, okay, I don't really need this, I can live without it. Let's keep going. Yeah. Sometimes just that moment you want something, but once you start, you know, then then you start to to let it go, right? I before the before aug today uh, before August, I actually have a quite long time. I never control myself for all desserts. I eat dessert, I eat, then I start to see my weight going up, 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 up. And then in August, I start to say, okay, no more, no more, no more. And I found I didn't grieve in for that. You know, it's, it's important. And then it's important when we teach kids, especially they have to uh, learn self-control because you're not there all the time, right? And so it's important to, to, to teach them this, okay? And then, you know, also important to control the, the negative emotion. Right? If you want to get so angry, if you are so angry, what did you do? Okay, pre picture if your kids now, it's very emotional. And then you are in the supermarket with your kids. What did you do? Your kids want a toy, it's there. Their drink toy is there. And you are in the supermarket, it's there. And they want now. What did you do? I would do what my parents did. If yeah. I wanted something and I would not shut the hell up, they would take me outside for like 10 minutes and they would, they would literally like sit me in front of the car and then just be like, are you done now? Uh, and then they would take me back inside. They would like let me get all that emotion out first and then they would take me back inside. So that's not shocking. Let's go back to the car. Mm -hmm. And then so that's kind of time out. Okay. And then when you're ready, then go mm -hmm. back. That's a good way. Any other strategy? What, what do your parents do? My parents, they would kind of do the same thing. Like if I was acting up when we were somewhere, they would like sit me, like we would sit in the car and we would wait. And then she'd be like, okay, are you done? Like, can we go back inside? And she would just take me back out to the car and then she'd sit there. Yeah. That's a good thing we have a car. <laughs> How about if you, if anybody you are from a very big city? People don't drive car there. Like if you take a bus, there may be restroom. Maybe you can go to restroom somewhere, right? Okay, so I have a, a two minutes. Maybe I can use these two minutes to get some your feedback. How about that? We didn't do that for a while. Everybody ready for me to recall your feedback? Is that good? Sounds a good idea? We didn't do for a while, right? Okay. I'm going to do this way. Okay, so you're okay, right? Yeah. Okay, what did you learn today? Um, I learned a lot about the different stages that children go through, like learning-wise, like mentally and physically. Okay. If you are ready, raise your hand so I can walk to you. Okay. Okay. I learned about two different types of punishment. There is power assertion and induction. One is physically taking out the punishment on somebody, and induction is simply talking about. Mm, which one are you going to, going to use? Induction. Induction. Okay. I know you raise your hand. Um, I learned about like the different like stages, like stages that you're at, but like sensory or pre-operational or sensory motor formal. Okay. And I believe you raise your hand, right? Or not yet? Yep. Okay. Um, I learned like again, like what he said with like the power assertion that like I that's how I was raised was more power assertion. So mm. I don't want to do that with my kids. I want to be more with the induction. Mm. Okay, Manasa. I learned about like the different stages growing up, like uh, the conservation and post and free. Yeah, which stage you are now? Post. <laughs> Okay, Michaela? Um, I learned about the two adaptive processes, accommodation and assimilation. Uh-huh. Okay, who, is, who else is raising your hand? Okay, uh, come here. Yes? 
Uh, I learned about um, um, Jean Kiega and the theory of mind. Okay. Okay. Now, henna. Uh, I learned about when to give rewards and like gratify them yeah. versus when not to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mia? Uh, I learned that culture shapes and structures children's cognitive development. Okay. Okay. And then. I just learned how I was raised, like the power of association, and I know how like I want to raise my kids, yeah. and like the difference of it, and also when to like like give them rewards if they do something good, and how long to wait between like if there's something bad, it you should like handle it right then and say no. Okay, great. How about you, Heaven? Um, I learned about the different developmental stages of like babies and how it changes from like when you're a baby to a teen to adulthood and like how the mind works and stuff like that like the simulation and the surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay, Raden, do I ask you yet? Mm -hmm. You got me. I got you. Okay, can you say the class is over? Uh, class is over. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, everybody have a good day. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> I have a good, you can see a very good class. Okay, bye-bye.